Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Which motherboard should you buy for the AMD Ryzen CPUs, a B350 or an X370? This is a comparison video between these chipsets and motherboards in general. Now I am using these two ASRock boards, the Gaming K4, because they are the same model, although different chipset, for the point of comparison. Now I will link to these down in the video description below, but please note that every motherboard is going to be a little bit different in features. I'm using these as representative examples because they fit the mainstream of these boards. This is a $99 B350 board and this is a $149 X370. Great value for the money for both of them. Which should you buy? It depends. Some of you should buy the X370 and some of you should buy the B350. They each have a place, but there are differences in them beyond just the chipsets themselves and that's what we're going to cover today. As we go through this comparison, please note that many, not all, but many of the features on this X370 board could technically be put on a B350. You just won't find them very much because it would increase the price to the point to where it doesn't make any sense you'd buy an X370. So in terms of the chipset itself, there are not huge differences. It's the feature that motherboard companies choose to put on the boards that really make the difference. Now, these are ASRock boards and ASUS, MSI, and Gigabyte boards are gonna be a little bit different. But in general, $99 boards tend to have pretty similar features and $150 boards tend to have pretty similar features. So as I go through this comparison list, if you're looking at different boards than these, check out these other features I'm about to highlight besides just the chipsets themselves. That'll help you make an informed decision about which one you wanna buy. For those of you who perhaps don't want to watch an entire video and just want the short answer up front, let me give you the short and sweet version. If you're getting any of the Ryzen 3 CPUs or the Ryzen APUs, get a B350. If you're getting a Ryzen 5 1400, 1500X, or 1600, or a Ryzen 7 1700, I would get a B350. If you're getting a Ryzen 5 1600X, or a Ryzen 7 1700X, or 1800X, get the X370 all day long. If you're getting one of those top-end X chips, definitely get the X370. But for the non-X chips, or even the 1500X, there really isn't any value in an X370 board, in my opinion. Put your money into a better CPU before you upgrade the motherboard. If you're getting those, just get a B350. It's a better deal for the money. First, let me talk about what's the same between these motherboards, and frankly, the same between basically any AM4 motherboard, be it B350 or X370 from any company. First of all, all the Ryzen CPUs and APUs from the Ryzen 3 1200 all the way through the Ryzen 7 1800X will work in all of these boards. They are all overclockable. All Ryzen CPUs are unlocked, and both the B350 and X370 will let you overclock or increase the clock multiplier and run them faster than designed. There are differences beyond that in terms of overclocking. We'll get to that in a minute, but they are all unlocked and they will allow overclocking. Performance is also the same. A Ryzen 5 1600 overclocked to 3.7 gigahertz will be exactly the same performance on this B350 as it will at 3.7 gigahertz on this X370. The motherboards do not affect performance. Whether you spend $100 or $300 on a motherboard, your system is not going to run faster. Its features, its overclocking options, because certainly 4 gigahertz would be faster than 3.7, those are the differences. But at any given clock speed, there's no difference in performance between these two motherboards. Now, I'm not going to cover the rest of the feature differences or the features of the AM4 in general because that's been covered many times on my channel, the launch videos, and others since then. So let's jump right into the differences. First of all, I already mentioned the first difference, price, $99 versus $149, $50 more. The differences list that we're about to go through essentially is, what do you get for the money when you spend more on a motherboard? Even if you're looking at different models, take a look at the differences I'm about to highlight because this list of differences, as I said at the beginning of the video, is largely what separates boards of different prices because the reality is now that the chipset is so integrated with the CPU and provided by the manufacturers, there's very little difference in terms of chipsets between boards these days. It's the optional features that make the difference. Difference number two, power phase delivery. This motherboard has a nine phase power delivery system this one has 12. Does it matter to the average user? Not in the least. If you're going to buy a Ryzen 5 1600 or a Ryzen 7 1700, use the included Wraith Spire cooler and set them to 3.7 gigahertz overclocked on all six or eight cores. This will do the job just fine. You don't need 12 power phases for that. 
Want to run at 4 gigahertz fixed on all the cores? Want a 1700X with all of the cores at, at 4 gigahertz? You're going to want the 12 power phases. It does make a difference. I've had much better luck with my 1700X chip at 4 gigahertz on high power phase boards such as this than I have. I don't get that on all the B350 boards. So if you're going for a maximum overclock, that's what the extra power phases are for. Difference number three, power delivery system. Now I mentioned nine phase versus 12 phase, but there's more to it than that. There's the capacitor design. There's the amperage of the digital power delivery system. This has 12K black capacitors from Japan. They are solid state capacitors designed for high power draw and high endurance. It also has a 45 amp digital power delivery system. This doesn't. Now, this will last for many, many years and will be just fine so long as you are not pushing it to the max. Again, 3.7 gigahertz using the included cooler on all the cores, this will not be an issue. It will last you for many, many, many years. But if you're pushing your machine to the max, if you're getting a 240 or 280 millimeter liquid cooler or a large tower cooler, if you want every ounce of performance out of your system that you can possibly get, you want that better power delivery system, the solid state caps, and the higher amperage digital power delivery. That's why those boards overclock better. They have things like that. The chipset's not different, but the optional features that companies install are. As I mentioned, these kind of differences are very similar across motherboard companies. ASUS does the same thing. Their $99 boards have lower end power delivery systems. Their $150 to $200 R boards have better. Difference number four, USB 3.1. Gen 1 versus Gen 2. This is very deceptive in the marketing. A lot of people are under the assumption that USB 3.1 automatically means 10 gigabits per second. It doesn't actually. It means it supports the Type-C port. There is a Type-C port on this, the small reversible lightning style connector, but it's only a 5 gigabit per second port. If you want the new high speed 10 gigabit USB standard, you have to go with this board. It's not included on the budget boards. Now they both do have USB 3.1, but this one is twice as fast. Number five, Crossfire and SLI support. The X370 properly supports Crossfire and SLI. It will allow you to run two cards 8X each directly to the CPU. This board does not. Now, a lot of people will comment, wait, it says Crossfire on the box. Does it not support Crossfire? Well, it does kind of, sort of. It runs the first graphics card at 16 lanes direct to the CPU, and it runs the second graphics card at four lanes piped through the chipset. They are not 8x, 8x, and they are not connected together. There's a latency penalty. It is not an optimal solution. It works. But seriously, if you're spending the money on two decent graphics cards, the extra $50 is not a big deal and it's a better implementation. So skip this if you're planning on getting any type of Crossfire SLI, go with the X370. Number six is audio. This is a very common difference between boards at different price points. The B350 board in front of me has the Realtek ALC892 audio chip. It is a 7.1 HD surround sound chip. It's just not as good as the Realtek ALC1220 that's in this X370. Again, you can find Realtek ALC1220s installed on B350 boards, just generally not at this price point. The 1220 is a newer chip. It has a better signal to noise ratio. It has some other options. There are some additional features on this board in terms of audio that's not on here. Does it matter? If you have $30 or maybe even $50 desktop speakers, probably not. Do you have $30 headphones? Probably not. Do you have $100 surround sound speakers? Are you really going to use a 7.1 surround sound system? Do you have $100 headphones? By all means, buy a motherboard with the better audio or perhaps even go with a sound card. I've covered sound cards previously. And if you do have over $100 speakers or a headphone, a sound card might actually be a good choice. Number seven, LAN. This has a Realtek Gigabit Ethernet port. This has an Intel Gigabit Ethernet port. They're exactly the same speed at one gigabit each, but Realtek, Intel. Intel is generally considered to be a premium option, maybe slightly lower latency or slightly better CPU usage versus the Realtek. These days, it's probably pretty minor, but if you care about such things or you have a compatibility reason to want Intel versus Realtek, just keep in mind the cheaper boards usually don't have an Intel gigabit NIC. Eight, ports. 
Now these both have eight USB ports on the back panels, but they're not the same ports. I mentioned Gen 1 versus Gen 2 before. This has more USB 2 ports on the back. This has more USB 3 ports on the back. If you're not connecting a lot of devices, this is not a big deal. Just be aware of that. The internal connectors are also different. This has a single USB 3 internal connector for say front panel ports. This has two of them and they both have two USB 2 internal connectors as well. PS2 ports are also different. This has a single PS2 mouse keyboard combo port on the back. This board actually has something quite rare these days. It has two PS2 ports on the back, a dedicated keyboard and a dedicated mouse port. Most people don't actually use those these days, but if you have a need for a modern high-end motherboard that also has two PS2 ports on the back, this one's got you covered. On the flip side, in terms of video ports, this has a DVI out, which this does not. But this is not a big deal because the only way you ever use those video ports is with the Ryzen APUs. And you shouldn't install an APU on anything more than a B350 anyway, so it's really sort of a moot point. Nine SATA ports. Now most B350 boards actually only have four SATA ports because the B350 chipset only supports four SATA ports. The X370 supports six. In this particular case, because this is a nicer B350 than most, it really is very well featured, there are six SATA ports. But note that four are provided by the chipset and four are provided by an AS Media additional controller that ASRock installed. Now this normally doesn't matter if you're just plugging in single drives, uh, either SSDs or hard drives, they'll work just fine. But if you want to raid them together, you want to raid a bunch of hard drives together, keep in mind that there's actually two separate controllers. You could raid six hard drives together using the BIOS using the X370 board here. You couldn't do that with the B350. Speaking of SATA, it's worth noting that using any device in the M.2 slots will cost you a serial ATA port. It will not in this. You can also use two NVMe PCI Express devices in this X370 board. You cannot hear even though it has dual M.2 slots. The bottom one is SATA only. And again, using any of those is going to cost you some ports. It's either or, not both. Number 10, a debug LED. Now for medium range systems that aren't being overclocked too much, this isn't a big deal. But please note, this motherboard has a two digit LED right on the board to let you know what the board's doing when it's booting up. If you're doing extreme overclocking, if you're going to four gigahertz, that is really, really helpful to figure out what's wrong. Do you have RAM that you're trying to overclock or use very high speed RAM and you wanna know if that's the hiccup? There is in the motherboard manual, a list of what all of the codes mean. So if the system freezes or has a problem, you can see what's going on just by looking at the motherboard. The B350s generally don't have that, but again, they're not for extreme overclocking. 11, RGB headers. Now these both have limited RGB on them. RGB varies from board to board, of course, but this particular board only has a single four pin RGB header on it. This one has two. If you want to build a nice RGB system, if you want to add the light strips to your system, this has two so you could run one on the top of your system and one on the bottom and control them separately rather than using a splitter. You can always use splitters, but having two lets you adjust them independently. So if you are planning on doing an RGB build, I would spend more money to get a board with two headers if that's important to you. Finally, number 12, fan headers. Four fan headers, five fan headers. Four is plenty for the kind of systems you're gonna buy a $99 motherboard, that doesn't bother me. But if you are building an overclock system, if you've got large coolers, multiple fans, a liquid cooler, this does have dedicated CPU pump uh, output for the fan that put out higher amperage if you've got a liquid cooler that runs off of the motherboard. Some don't, some use a SATA connector for power. But if you need to run off the motherboard, it has those. And of course it has a whole extra one to connect more devices to. So again, Overclocking to the extreme, overclocking mildly. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I am covering these two specific boards at these price points. Every two sets of boards on the market are gonna be a little bit different. You could take, for example, Asus, they have the B350 ROG Strix, and then the X370 ROG Strix. Again, it's gonna be about $50 difference in price, and there are feature differences between those boards. It's not just the chipset. So if you're thinking, well, I'll just save a little bit of money, but I'm gonna overclock to four gigahertz and put a big cooler on it, yeah, spend the extra $50 on your board. However, the value for the money, for most people watching my channel, it would be to run at 3.7 gigahertz, use the included coolers, buy a non-X chip, 
buy something like this and be very happy with incredible performance for the money. You'd spend a lot of money, more on the motherboard, more on the cooler, more on the CPU, to get an X chip, to buy a large cooler, to buy a nicer motherboard. Now, if you want a high-end system, if you're building a premium system, by all means do so. But the real value, the beauty of Ryzen, is this combined with one of the non-X chips, and that's a lot of value for the money. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe with the big huge red button directly below. Questions and comments in the comment section, check the links in the video description. Links to these two specific boards will be right down there at the top. Links to all of my motherboard and CPU reviews will be there as well. And then finally, a link to Newegg and Amazon for a variety of boards that I think are good value for the money will be down there as well. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.